Good morning, good morning, and welcome to the Morning Report. My name is Willie Lawson. Uh, this is Morning Report 301. It is April 5th, 2010. I trust that you are well where you are. It is a beautiful day here in West Central Florida. It's a little chilly, it's a little cold, well, chilly. A little less hot than it would be normally. And the, and the humidity is down. It's nice. It's it, it's nice. I was just outside a little bit ago uh, taking the garbage to the curb so it can be picked up by our great city workers. Uh, it, um, no, and I, I don't mean that facetiously. I know you thought that I meant that facetiously, but I don't. Uh, so it is it is good. I, I thank you for those of you who have watched uh, the 300th episode. And uh, listened here online. It was um, it was absolutely a fantastic gas. It was <clears throat> a technical nightmare, <laughs> but but you know us. You, you know we're going to push the envelope. You know what every way possible we can. So uh, it's, it was just nice that we, you know we were able to do three hundred episodes. Like I mentioned in, in the program, you know you do one and you hope to be able to do a number. You know another a nine more. Um, so at least you get to ten. <laughs> you know. Uh, but uh, it went well. Thank you again uh, to my friend Paul Swanson, my ride or die, um, from the Ascent of Canada. We appreciate you, and uh, we appreciate everything you've done. Uh, our partnership since 2009, 2010 has been solid. We appreciate it. I do. I just, I mean, you just can't say enough about Paul Swanson. Paul Swanson is so rock solid. You just can't say enough about him. Uh, so you want to go to the Swanson report.net, the Swanson report.net, the Swanson report.net and check out his writings and check out his page. If you don't believe me for some reason, you think that I'm wrong. I am not, uh, it's today, uh, is a pushback day. It's pushback Monday. Um, there, uh, there is some pushback going on. I know that we see a lot of news and we see a lot of reports that, um, it seems that the left is just not only ascendant, they're just uh, running around doing whatever they want, you know, however they want. And I think there's a lot of news reporting on that, even by conservative sources, that is sucking the the hope out of people. That is put, I mean, that is crushing the hope of folks. They don't think, you know, the average person doesn't think there's anything they can do. You know, it, it, it seems like the, you know, voting pff, is not enough, you know protesting rallying is not enough because you can't get together in groups bigger than you know bigger than two because of you know the rona so it you know it, it's easy to feel you know sad it's easy to feel disenfranchised it's easy to feel hopeless and this is the and, and, and this is really the downside you know we even on social media you know you follow people all the time and um to, to, to know what's going on, but there's so much going on and everybody's saying what the left is doing, you know, in, you know, in my circles, it's like this, you know, uh, it's people who talk about what the devil's doing, you know, the devil's doing this in my life and the devil's doing this in my life. And you know what? And our question is, so what is God doing in your life? Why are you spending so much time focused on the devil? Why are you devil focused instead of Jesus focused. Why are you left focused as opposed to right focused? Why are you like that? Why do you care more that uh, Joe Biden or or, or the president um, is going to spend almost $100 million on hotel rooms for illegal aliens? Because that you know that those facilities are, are 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 packed to the guts, than what Ted Cruz was able to do with with seventeen other senators, exposing what was going on there, exposing not only what was going on there, but you know how it was being done and who was in charge. That's called pushback. That's not people just sitting there with their hands folded. That's called called pushback you know when James O'Keefe went to the border and was told to get off of federal property because it was private no it's not private it's federal property which means it's, it's the most public property of all it's okay and then got into his plane got into his private plane and flew over the facility and exposed them 
That's the pushback. Let's try to focus more on what the good guys are doing as opposed to what the bad guys are doing. And we're going to do a little bit of that today. Uh, Again, we'll be back with more of the program right after these messages. If you are a true blue conservative, small businesses are near and dear to your heart. They are the lifeblood of our life and economy. I believe this, and that's why my florist is not a website or phone number. My florist is Blooming Day's Flower Shop, Tampa's premier flower shop. At 11618 North Florida Avenue here in Tampa, Florida, and at 6835 State Road 54 in Newport Ritchie. Call Christine at 813-933-1942 and at 727-232-6900. She can also be reached on the web at www.bloomingdays.com. We are in tumultuous times here on the internet. Many platforms are finally taking this opportunity to rid themselves of conservative voices. A lot of you are learning how this internet game is played and are wondering if there is a place for you online. Well, yes, there is. Freedomforum.website is providing a place for everyone to be, including conservatives. Freedomforum.website is dedicated to the First Amendment and free speech for everyone. Join us there and speak your mind. One of the things that I get asked most is where can I get information that is not tainted with liberal bias, especially here in the Tampa Bay area? Well, now I have the answer. DBCTampa.com A website by and for Tampa area conservatives. Tampa's leading conservative voices speak freely at TBCTampa.com And you can too. So join the fun and enjoy the freedom at TBCTampa.com A conservative who seeks truth over the conventional statist wisdom, coming to you from the southern headquarters of FightBackMedia.com, your host, Willie Lawson. All right, we're back. Thank you again, Paul. We, we appreciate you greatly. All righty. Um, again, what are the good guys doing? Well, I'll tell you. We got a new good guy. Yeah, if you were wondering what the church was doing, you were wondering what the good guys guys were doing. Um, there is a Canadian pastor in Calgary. Now, Calgary is out west, right? Uh, yeah, that's what the Calgary Stampede is, uh, big rodeo and that kind of thing. Calgary police was met with was resistance when they attempted to shut down the Good Friday church service for violating COVID restrictions. Uh, Arthur Pulowski, the pastor of the Cave of the Adlam, told police to leave and not return until they have a search warrant in hand. He said, you come back with a warrant, Pulowski said. Out, out, out. He he kicked them out. You got to go. Police were, of course, hesitant to leave, but the pastor wasn't backing down. Out of this property, you Nazis, Pulowski shouted. Gestapo is not allowed here. And there was this health official, because what happens is that the uh, the health officials uh, get police backup when they have to go into these places to uh, ostensibly shut them down or, or ticket them or whatever. Um, because people are, you know why, do you know why they need police backup? Because people are pissed. People are sick of it. And people are going to push back. So they bring, they bring, bring the jackbooted thugs. Okay. Uh, They bring the police to protect them and they intimidate people. But as the police left the property, Pulaski told them not to come back. You Nazi psychopaths. Here's what Pulaski said. Unbelievable. Sick 
people, sick, evil people, intimidating people in a church during the Passover. You can stop all Nazis, communist fascists. Don't you dare come back here, he shouted, as they walked away. They left. He stood up to them and they left. Can you imagine these psychopaths? He said, um, Plowski says, Passover is the holiest Christian festival in a year. And they're coming to intimidate Christians during the holiest festival. Unbelievable. What is wrong with these sick psychopaths? It's beyond me. Wow, how dare they? Unbelievable. We're living in a total takeover of the government with their thugs, goons, and brown shirts. The Gestapo wannabe dictators. Coming to the church armed with guns and tasers and handcuffs to intimidate during Passover, during Passover celebration. Well, I guess that's what it is. They want to enslave us all like the Egyptians did. They want to be the pharaohs of today. That's what they're doing. Unbelievable. People, if you don't stand up, wake up now. I don't know what will happen tomorrow. The pastor warned about Germany, where the wannabe Hitlers are already ruling, and fascism is reigning once again. He took particular issue with the country's lockdown. He referenced the the COVID passports that are being talked about and potentially implemented. If you will not be vaccinated like a dog or a cat, you will not be able to buy or sell. You will not be able to go to school or work. Is it the future you want? Polsky asked. Is this what you want for your children and your grandchildren? So according to Pastor, uh, the time to stand up and push back against the out-of-control government is now. There it is. If you believe, if you are hopeless at this point, if you are ready to throw in the towel, know that there, that not everybody who is insane, you know, conspiratorialist, are giving up. There are regular folks out there who have had it who have just had it, who see the writing on the wall. You know, we're not any different than any other, you know, civilization or any other culture. We are all susceptible to what we're seeing and what we've seen in the past. But the Calgary police had an update. The Calgary police issued a statement about the situation saying they were called to assist Alberta Health Services and the City of Calgary Bylaw Services over public health concerns. Um, the concern was that the people in attendance were not adhering, adhering to government's COVID-19 health orders, which are put in place to ensure everyone's safety, the statement said. Uh, police, are, police are frequently asked to assist public health officers when responding to violation calls in an effort to help and keep the peace due to high levels of conflict between citizens and health inspectors slash government. The CPD um, stated no tickets were issued and the future action is really up to other government agencies. We understand the pandemic has caused great disruption to call uh, Calgarians in their professional and personal lives, the statement said. We do not wish to disrupt anyone's holidays or religious uh, spiritual events. However, we must support our partner agencies when called upon to ensure everyone can safely celebrate these occasions except we don't want you to celebrate these occasions. Hmm. Yeah, that that, that sentence needed a comma. Yeah, part of the um, the Calgary police tweet uh, because they, uh, they got embarrassed. The organizer of the of the gathering, the pastor, um, was uncooperative with the health inspector and repeatedly raised his voice, asking the parties to leave the premises, which they did, which they did approximately one minute after entry in a peaceful manner. So they're trying to portray the pastor 
as uncooperative and yelling, which he was yelling. He was talking over the, yeah, over, over that. The health officer sure was. Wanted to make sure they knew in every way, there was no doubt, they were not welcome on that property. They were not invited. They had no business there. They say, and, and, and this is in, in the um, Calgary Police Department tweet, uh, no tickets were issued at the time and will be up to the partner agencies to determine subsequent enforcement activity in response to the situation. We understand. Yeah, we, yeah we, I, I, I just read that. Yeah. <sighs> Friends, people are pushing back. Now, I'm sure not everybody is ready to get into a shouting match with everybody else. I'm sure of it. And I under- and believe me, I understand that. But there are ways. You know, it's you know, and, and we think that somehow these these sort of brazen things won't happen to us, but they will. Like I, we had yesterday we went to Easter services. Now, to give you my situation, it's, it, it, it's a little different than a lot of you, but not that uncommon. We hold our church services in, the, um, in one of the meeting rooms of a hotel. Now, the hotel asked us to walk through. When we walk through, just like their hotel guests, they wear, in, in, in the public space, they wear face covering. And so do we as we walk through. It's it's foolish, really, but we walk through. And um, there aren't any real restrictions once we get into our room. Only in our room. And it's not a gathering of hun- of hundreds of people. It's usually a gathering of 25 people or so. Yeah, so it's okay. It's fine. Um, I think there's been... Th- four of us that I remember that I, that I can think of that have come down with the Rona and everybody's fine. And all four of us are fine. Three of us are this family. <laughs> Three of us are my family, but uh, we're all fine. And we didn't get the Rona there. I'm pretty sure we didn't get Rona at church. Alrighty. There you go. Uh, people are fighting back folks. It's okay. Heck be encouraged. Even the ACLU, which a lot of times we have trouble with is not all that happy or pleased about this whole vaccine passport thing. In order to get the Wuhan coronavirus pandemic under control, the government is in in conjunction with medical professionals is pushing Americans to be immunized against the virus. Some have talked about implementing a quote, COVID vaccine passport, end quote, which would provide proof of immunization before every, every day, before everyday occurrences like traveling or even entering places of business. Conservatives have voiced concerns about Big Brother thought uh, process behind the move. Where is the line drawn and where will this end? Well, the, well we, what we know is there, there will not be a line that will be drawn and it won't end. How do we know these passports won't be used in other aspects? Of course they're going to be. You you guys remember a year ago when I told you, be aware of the following phrase, out of an abundance of caution. Do I remember that? Do I remember that? Hmm. Uh, yeah. How do we know these won't these tests won't be used in other aspects of our lives? The American Civil Liberties Union has concerns. Wow, the ACLU has concerns at least on the digital front. While the lefty organization doesn't take issue with the vaccine passports as a whole, they take issue with the passports being used on a digital platform. According to the ACLU, an exclusively digital passport system is a non-starter because it would increase inequality. Those who are poor, disabled, homeless, or seniors would have would greatly uh, would be greatly impacted. These demographics are the least likely to have smartphones, uh, which would necessarily uh, for, would be necessary for digital passports. Digital passports would create a burden on demographics. Our health our our healthcare system is already 
ridden with in- inequities from the top to the bottom, we don't want to worsen the situation by closing off even more societal benefits from those who can least afford it or have reason for such a or or have reason to fear such a system, including immigrant communities and communities of color who have already subject to over-policing and surveillance, the ACLU said in a blog post. The organization also warned about privacy concerns and the lack of user control, which could then spread to other health records and licenses. Of course. Numerous companies... um, Technologists and academics have already generated a variety of concepts, standards, and products that would let us uh, use cr- uh, cryptographic files or tokens on our phones to, to prove things about ourselves across our lives. The Post said the best of these schemes and the only one that should be considered for any digital implement- elements of vaccine credential systems take a decentralized and open source approach that puts individuals in control of their credentials and identity data, which then uh, they would hold a in a digital wallet. Mm-hmm. But according to the ACLU, that's not uh, that's not only uh, only privacy concern. They there is also the potential for new databases to be established based on movement patterns, where we go, how we get there, who we're with, those who will be tracked through technology, and specifically through these passports. And you know, that is coming. We have to do everything we can to say no to this stuff. You know, I I, I talked to someone the other day, you know, a couple weeks ago, and they were, uh, were, were talking about taking a vaccine, or taking the vaccine, and they told me that they were going to, do, I mean, they they were sort of leery of doing it, but they what they were afraid of was if they didn't take the vaccine, they wouldn't be able to travel. They wouldn't be able to visit family. They wouldn't be able to do stuff. Now, this is still, at this point, this is still a disease that 99% of people recover from. Fewer people recover from pneumonia. This is still a virus that 99% of people recover from. Still, with all the horror that we've experienced in the past year, this is still a disease that 99% of people recover from, a virus that 99% of people recover from. Still, still, are you kidding me? So it went from 15 days to flatten the curve. And now we're talking about if you don't take the jab, if you don't take this shot, then you can't get on an airplane. You may not be able to go into a grocery store. Now, when I say that, you go, ah, no, it's happening in Israel. It's happening. It's happening in Israel. This is why you you need not be hopeless. You need to be encouraged. You need to be able to stand up. You need to be able to say something. Now, your circle of influence may not be governmental. You may not have a voice in Congress or even at, even at City Hall, but you do have a voice in your church and you do have a voice in your home and you do have a voice at work. You do. Use it. Use it. Don't let people in your circle think that everybody is down with this when we're not. Do not give anybody the impression that, well, everybody else is okay with it, so maybe I should be okay with it too. And you know, and you should know now, that not everybody else is down with it. Not everybody else is okay with it. So you don't have to be. You can see where this could lead. Stand up. Say something. In your circle. Where people are talking about it, you go, nah, I don't I don't I don't like that. I don't like them knowing where I am. I don't like them. I don't I don't like the lack of privacy. I don't like it. They don't they've never done this with anything else. Things that were worse. 
They didn't do this with polio. They didn't do this with smallpox. And smallpox is way worse. Why now? This is, a, 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 and keep saying, this is a virus that 99% of people recover from. It doesn't make any sense. Say it. Even if you get pushed back from the people around you, say it. Because once you say it, it can't be unheard. This is why we do this. This is our 301st time doing it. Why? Because once it gets said, it can't be unheard. That's what it's all about. All right, we need a little break. We'll be back with more of the Morning Report, 301st edition episode right after these messages. Everybody. My name is Willie Lawson, and um, you guys know that I do a lot of stuff on the internet. And you may think with um, what's happening on Twitter and what's happening on Facebook and what happened to Parler that um, the mainstream uh, social media sources are really trying to rid themselves of conservative voices. And you'd be right. They most certainly are. Um, but you know what? It isn't as bad as you think it is. It's worse. But there are uh, people who are willing to be platformed for free speech. One of those, one of those places is freedomforum.website. Freedomforum.website. You can go there and speak your mind. So come join us. Enjoy the freedom. Enjoy the fun. If you are a true blue conservative, Small businesses are near and dear to your heart. They are the lifeblood of our life and economy. I believe this, and that's why my florist is not a website or phone number. My florist is Blooming Day's Flower Shop, Tampa's premier flower shop. At 11618 North Florida Avenue here in Tampa, Florida, and at 68. 35 State Road 54 in Newport Ritchie. Call Christine at 813-933-1942 and at 727-232-6900. She can also be reached on the web at www.bloomingdays.com. One of the things that I get asked most is where can I get information that is not tainted with liberal bias, especially here in the Tampa Bay area? Well, now I have the answer. DBCTampa.com, a website by and for Tampa area conservatives. Tampa's leading conservative voices speak freely at tbctampa.com. And you can too. So join the fun and enjoy the freedom at tbctampa.com.
My name is Willie Lawson, and this is The Morning Report. All right, we're back. We are back. Thank you ever so much. You know, it's it, 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 it's funny. One of the things that I've been trying to trying to preach, trying to trying to get across to people is this: that uh, whatever news story comes out, let's sort of keep our powder dry in the beginning of the news story. You know, because a lot of these stories hit you know at nine o'clock in the morning, and we find out by six o'clock in the evening they're completely non-issues. They have gone in a complete cycle. It happens more than not. Uh, and so a lot of times it is, it's really, really, really important not to react to or, or to overreact early. And we, you know, and, and because a lot of times we put ourselves in really untenable positions in our tweets and our Facebook posts or whatever. So a lot of times we could just, we should just wait, just wait, just exhibit some control because this is what the left doesn't do. Um, the left tried to blame the Capitol attack on a white guy the other day. You know, tried to cover, you know, this this, this attack on this um, Capitol police officer uh, on on a white guy. Yesterday, uh, one man decided to ram some barricades and attack Capitol police in Washington D.C. Once again, the Hill was on total lockdown. Two police officers were initially reported injured after the confrontation with the suspect, who later exited his car with a knife and rushed the officers. Crazy dude, right? He was shot and killed. One officer, unfortunately, later died of his injuries. Yet before we could even get to what happened, the left was out in force trying to blame this on Donald Trump and white people. It, it happened again. And guess what else happened? They ate the pavement for being totally wrong. Hmm. That's kind of fun. I've never seen a more eager group of idiots play the guess who game with these sorts of stories and get so completely and utterly, utterly wrong. The suspect was a, was very, 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 very non-white. By the way, his name was Noah Green, a black man and a nation of Islam supporter. Does this sound like the Ku Klux Klan to you? Liberal America? Does it sound like the Ku Klux Klan? Does it sound like the Knights of the White Camellia? Also, take a uh, take a bow, MSNBC. You just peddled total fake news about this tragic event. Yes. They, I mean, they and and they kept and they kept doing it and they kept doing it. And they kept doing it. MSNBC erroneously reported Friday that the suspect in the Friday deadly car attack at the U.S. Capitol was a white male. During the network's 2, p- 2 p.m. Eastern Time program, Katie Turr reports, NBC, NBC News Justice Correspondent Pete Williams provided reporting on the then unidentified suspect who had just died. The question is now, what's the condition of the Capitol Police officers who were injured when the man, uh, when the man were told was a white male was driving the car? When the man got out of the car and attacked the police officers with a knife, uh, Williams said um, on, NB, on MSLSD's Katie Turr reports, uh, Green allegedly slammed a sedan into two police officers near the Capitol uh, North Barricade, the entrance of the member uh, where the members of Congress and their aides come and go from the Capitol building. Sources told Fox News the attack appeared to be of the lone wolf variety and added that the suspect identified himself on Facebook as a Nation of Islam follower who may have recently lost his job. Uh, Green's Facebook page, which also has been taken down, of course, uh, included photos and videos of the Nation of Islam rallies and the uh, bio identif- and the bio identified Green as a follower of Farrakhan. Hmm. Now, I'm looking at this guy. It doesn't look white to me. He's got... I'm going to say it this way, Negroid features. He's got a big, broad nose. He's a brown-skinned fellow. He's not light-skinned. He's a brown-skinned fellow. Scarily enough, he looks like he looks, he looks kind of like my nephew. 
There you go. So someone rams the Capitol and they uh, and r- runs after people with a knife. Claire de la Lune, which is Claire uh, uh, MPLS, who's uh, they put up Biden voters posting their L's online. <laughs> M- M- NBC 10 Philadelphia says does not to pe- does not appear to be terror- terrorism related DC police said investigations continue however so this woman posts so it was a white guy got it suspect white male you know you know it, it wasn't a white dude the story will be out of the news quickly our friends at Twitchy noted the very obvious reason why this attack was not trending on social media. As soon as Green's face was identified, the sweeping under the rug protocols were engaged. Meanwhile, there's there's another mess of tweets of liberals just embarrassing themselves again for playing the game. Yeah, yeah this is this is what they do. They will be found out. This is the thing that ought to encourage you. It seems almost it seems almost every time now. They push a narrative, and if we just keep our powder dry, hold on. Ah, truth. Look at that. Look at that truth. Let's promote the truth. Whatever our our presence on social media, whatever's left of it, whatever remnants of it that we have, we should just promote truth. Not attacks. Not participate in the Br'er Rabbit bullcrap. Just truth. So how do you permit, so you can ask me, how do you promote truth in this instance? Oh, capital attacker was not a white man. was not white. NBC, CBS, ABC, MSLSD, CNN said he was white. They were wrong. Again. That's how you do it. You don't have to mention you, you, you don't have to mention Louis Farrakhan. You don't have to mention Nation of Islam. You don't have to do any of that. MSNBC, the mainstream media said that this was a white guy. They were wrong. It was not. Truth. All righty. Let's see what else we got here before we get. Yeah, we got to get going. Um, this is funny. Let me go ahead and play. Let me go ahead and play this for you, because this guy is not. A, please do not try to make this fellow into some microwave conservative. Uh, he is not. This is Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley is not some Trump supporting uh flag waving he's just a guy who has opinions. <laughs> Here's one of them. Shared that news how painful it was. Yeah, but the one thing I took out of that piece was man, I think most white people and black people are great people. I really believe that in my heart. But I think our system is set up where our politicians, whether they're Republicans or Democrats, are designed to make us not like each other so they can keep their grasp of money and power. They divide and conquer. I truly believe in my heart most white people and black people are awesome people. But we're so stupid following our politicians, whether they are Republicans or Democrats. And their only job is, hey, let's make these people not like each other. We don't live in their neighborhoods. We all got money. Let's make the whites and blacks not like like each other. Let's make rich people and poor people not like each other. Uh, let's let's scramble the middle class. I truly believe that in my heart. The denizens of division who keep their power by making sure that there is division and derision. Charles Barkley is not, Charles Barkley is, 
I think he's insane. Uh, I loved, I love Sir Charles, but he's not entirely wrong. So we have to be very, very careful about how we approach things, how we approach people, how we approach subject, and we need to be really, really um, serious about why are we acting or reacting or feeling a certain way. Because what we know is, and Charles is right, what we know is that most of the people that we know that are black or white or whatever, that, you know, that are in our circle or who are in our lives at work or at school are cool, are fine. And we don't have any trouble with them. Most of us have never had any trouble with anybody, really. You know, we just haven't. So most people, especially if you are going to look at it um, based on race, we have any trouble with. Now, we may not live in a neighborhood, some of y'all may not live in a neighborhood where there are a lot of people of another race or culture. You might not. You may be black and live in a primarily black neighborhood. Or you may be white and live in a primarily white neighborhood. You might. But the black people that you encounter, you're having trouble with. You're having a problem with. And on the other side, the white, the white folks that you encounter, you're having trouble with. They're fine. People that you meet at work, whatever, they're fine. They're okay. You know, they do their thing and you do your thing and, and you interact however you interact and you move on with your lives. So this continuous, um, supposedly, tension, racial tension, most of us never experience. We just don't. You know, I I, I, I talked to a young man, I don't know, a a, a few years ago, and um, I said to him, you know, He's a young white fellow, well, younger than me anyway. I said, listen, stop with the whole feeling bad for me and you stop with all the all the white virtue signaling. Please stop because it's, it's, it's first of all, for me, as a 60-year-old man, it's annoying. Just stop. Just stop. And then he's a musician, so I asked him, so do you play with, you know, as a musician, you perform with, rehearse with, collaborate with a lot of people who are black or Hispanic or Asian. Yeah, all the time. Hmm. Do you have any beef with them because they're black or, or Asian or Hispanic? Do you have any beef with you? No, no. So you don't see what media is telling you you should be seeing. No. Then how many of these people that you know are in multicultural, mixed cultural relationships. He pondered that for a moment. And he said, a lot of them, really? Yes. How many biracial, multiracial people do you know personally who are listening to this program? A lot more than you did 20 years ago. A lot, a hell of a lot more than you did 30, 35 or 40 years ago. That is for sure. That is for sure. And what I mean by biracial and multiracial, we're talking about um, how everyone how everyone makes it up. Black Hispanic, black white, white Hispanic, white Asian, black Asian. Uh, however, you want, however you however you want to mix it up. A lot more. How many biracial people are you seeing on television? You don't ever see biracial people on TV. Not biracial people that you knew about. Everywhere. So the tension that they're telling you about, you're not experiencing it. And I can tell you, I, and I can try, I can probably go out on a limb and tell you that hardly anybody is. Unfortunately, because uh, we live in a sinful fallen world, racism is not dead and will never die. But is it at the level that the politicians and the media want you to believe? My guess is no. My guess is no. Are they using it to control you? Are they using it to control people's emotions? 
My knowledge is yes. My name is Willie Lawson. This has been the Morning Report. Uh, thank you ever so much for tuning in. Uh, again, thank you. Until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody, and for goodness sakes, y'all take care of yourself. We'll see you when we see you. Bye-bye now. We appreciate the time you took today to listen to the broadcast. Please check the links below on how to further interact with the FightbackMedia.com network. Please remember to like and share this broadcast with your like-minded friends and family. Also, we'd appreciate your subscription to the broadcast, and make sure to hit the notification bell so you're notified when we upload new content.